السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وسيدنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الرحيمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم everyone Today, inshallah, we will be talking about the third wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Aisha bint Abi Bakr al-Siddiq, radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, wa radiyallahu an walidiha wa arda. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we all know that after the death of uh, Sayyidna, uh, Sayyida Khadija radiyallahu anha uh, Sayyida Khawla radiyallahu anha came and asked Sayyidna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why you don't get married and then she said you can get married to a, a, a virgin and to uh, a married woman whose uh, husband uh, died to a widow. So he said, who are these? And she says, the virgin is Aisha bintu Abi Bakr, the daughter of your uh, uh, truthful friend. And the uh, uh, widow is Sauda bintu Zama'a. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, go and talk to the, uh, to, to, to the parents. Go and mention, mention that to them. So this, this lady uh, went and uh, she, uh, she uh, talked to, uh, she, she went to um, Sayyidina Umm Ruman was the mother of uh, Khadija uh, of Aisha radiallahu anha and she uh, she said uh, said to her uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, has sent me to you and you have got a, a lot of khayr and barak and blessings and she said what is it and she says Sayyidina Muhammad is asking for the marriage of Aisha. And uh, uh, Sayyidina Umm Ruman radiyallahu anha uh, said to, to her, but uh, she was surprised actually. And she said to her, okay, my, my husband is coming. Well, uh, you can talk to him. So... Uh, Sayyidina uh, Khawla talked to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Abu Bakr looked at her and he said how, how can this happen? I am his brother so go to him and ask him that so uh, she went back to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she she said to him, uh, "This is what's uh, what's happening. This is what Abu Bakr is saying. How can you marry? He is your brother, and Aisha is is his daughter, so she will be your niece. How how can you get married to her?" And he said to her, uh, "He is my brother." And uh, in Islam, and his his daughter can be. I can marry her. So uh, she went back to him, and she told him. But Abu Bakr radiallahu an had given a promise to Al Mutaim ibn Adi when he asked that his son marries Aisha radiallahu anha. So Abu Bakr 
never broke a, a promise. So he, what happened? Abu Bakr radiallahu an went to Al Mutam ibn Adi, and um, he, he uh, Al Mutam's wife was present. So he said to her, he said to Al Mutam, "What do you think of my daughter?" And uh, he looked. Uh, Al Mutam looked at his, uh, at his mother, at his wife, and he said to her, "What do you say?" So she said, uh, she said to Abu Bakr, maybe if we get our son to marry your daughter, then she will make him change his religion and she, he will, uh, he will uh, be in a new religion. So uh, his father, the father of the boy, al Mutaim, looked at Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and he said, you hear what she says. So Abu Bakr went out, he left them, and he was released of his promise. So Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, was told by her mom, uh, that uh, someone is coming. <laughs> so, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu came to their house and um, she was still uh, seven years old when that wa- when uh, she was went- mentioned by Jibreel alayhi salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi to get married to her. So he went when he went to them. Aisha radiallahu anha was playing on a swing, and uh, uh, her mom called her, and then she she came to to her mom, and her mom uh, got some water and she uh, wiped her face, and then she uh, she combed her hair and she um, got her to enter into the house. And in the house, there were men and women, and Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was there. So she, uh, she, uh, her mom uh, gave, uh, sent uh, her daughter to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and she said, those are uh, uh, your family, Ya Rasulullah, this is your family. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless, uh, bless you, bless her, and uh, that was that was it. Then, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam waited until Sayyida um, uh, Aisha radhiyallahu anha was nine years old, and then he consumed the marriage. Aisha radhiyallahu anha said, "On that day, uh, uh, the day of her marriage." There were uh, no camels uh, slaughtered, nothing, except for the uh, pot of food that Sa'd ibn Ubadah used to send to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, um, so this was the marriage of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Aisha radiallahu anha and Someone might say, why would Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam get married to uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha? He was about 50, 53 years old and she was nine years old. So uh, when, when uh, he died, he was 18 years old. So, but to get married, a fifty-three years old to a nine years old, so many, so many questions were asked about uh, about this uh, this marriage. So why why would Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam get married to such a young girl? Uh, as, as I just mentioned, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married 
uh, before Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, uh, he married Khadija radiallahu anha, and she was 15 years older than him. And she died at the age of 65. So 25 years that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, lived with Khadija radiallahu anha and he did not take any other wife with her. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Sauda radiallahu anha, a woman of his age. And uh, when, uh, so, so that marriage, okay, same age, that's understandable. How, how, what happened at the, uh, when, when he got married to Aisha radiallahu anha? At that time, at their time, it was so normal that a girl would get married at the age of Aisha radiallahu anha. So between 9 and 13, between 9 and 12, that's the norm for them. And we know that when uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, when his daughter Hafsa, uh, when her husband died, Sayyidina Umar went to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and asked him to marry his daughter. And Abu Bakr was older than Umar radiallahu anhu. So this was the norm that someone older would marry a younger girl, and uh, there was no, um, no, no problem with that. So when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got married uh, with this big difference of age, that was, that was okay, that was no, uh, norm, the, that was normal at that time. So who was, who was say, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha? Aisha radiallahu anha at her at at the uh, when she was still so young, she was a very smart girl. And when she got older, then she was the most knowledgeable of all women. And Sayyidina Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, knew how knowledgeable she was. She was Nisa il Ard, the most knowledgeable of all women. She was confident, she was assertive, she was knowledgeable, she was eloquent, and some uh, uh, narrations say that. She was the most knowledgeable of all the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was so eloquent when she speaks. So Urwa ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu said, uh, I heard the speeches of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. And none of them was as eloquent as Aisha radiallahu anhu. And by the way, Aisha was the aunt of Sayyidina Urwa. So she was the most, the most uh, knowledgeable in fiqh, in hadith, in inheritance. And she excelled everyone else in poetry and medicine. So uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari says, when we could not figure, uh, figure something out, when there is a problem, when there is, uh, when there is uh, an issue that would mm, bewilder us, that no one can, uh, can understand, that no one can solve. So when there is an issue, 
we you, we would go to Aisha radiallahu anha. And of course, that was after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we would go to Aisha radiallahu anha and she would clarify everything for us. And it is known that she taught a lot of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever was seeking knowledge would stop by Aisha radiallahu anha to get the, the, the exact knowledge. And she narrated 2,210 hadith uh, uh, about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So her narrations gives us access to the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She, she would uh, explain the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She taught us she, uh, how he slept, how he prayed, how he fasted, how he prayed at night, how she taught us everything about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Fatima, used to have deep love for Aisha radiallahu anha. They, they both had deep connection. And uh, he used to have fun with her. And we know that she was so young, and uh, uh, she, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would allow her to watch the Abyssinians playing with the spears, and she would be behind the uh, behind them, and she would be watching them, and she would enjoy her time. Uh, also, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, uh uh, in, in one of uh, the occasions, she was with uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he, uh, he used to uh, uh, race with her. So he said to her, let's race. And she, she was very uh, thin and uh, she, was, she was young. So when they raced, they... Uh, uh, subhanallah, she she was faster than him. So she won the race and they were laughing. Then later, uh, she, she, uh, she uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, let's race. And he beat her. He won. And she said, I gained some weight and I am not as fast as I used to be. So he said, one by one. So you beat me one and then now I am beating you. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I mentioned, he used to have deep love to Aisha radiallahu at, at his death, sickness, at the very last days, he asked the permissions of all his wives so that he would be at Aisha's house. And um, it is known that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was taking care of him during the, these uh, uh, days, the, the last few days. And exactly before his death, uh, she she saw him looking at her. Uh, she was having um, a piece of siwak, and he looked at the siwak, and she immediately understood that he wanted the siwak, and she said, "Ya Rasulullah, do you want it?" And he said, "Yes, I want it." So she softened it with her saliva, and she gave it to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that was the last thing that uh, uh, was in in his mouth before his death. So uh, 
she said after after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away, uh, she said that was the last thing my saliva got uh, united with his saliva. Subhanallah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away in Aisha's lap. She was with him all the time. Later on, she had a dream and she saw three moons fell in her lap. Then she, she went to her dad and she said, uh, she said the dream to her dad. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr interpreted it that you will get good news. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried in her house, which is her room, actually. And then when her father died, he was buried next to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And later on, when Sayyidina Umar died, before he died, he asked the permission that he is buried next to them. Of course, she had in mind that that spot would be her grave. But when she, when Sayyidina Umar asked her to be buried there, she couldn't say no. And she knew that this was the interpretation of the three moons fell, for, uh, falling in her lap. So the three important figures uh, were buried in her house, in her room. Subhanallah. Now, we all know about uh, the incident of, of the slander, which was made by the head of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubayn ibn Salul. And he intended with this incident to hurt Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in one of the uh, uh, expeditions, in one of the battles in Banu uh, Dagazwas, uh, she was uh, the wife to accompany Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, uh, it was uh, late when she wanted to use the uh, to relieve herself, so she left the army, and that was after they won the uh, battle and everything. So she left the uh, the army and went a little far just to uh, relieve herself. At that time. Uh, the army got uh, ready and they left. So when they uh, uh, lifted the haudaj, when they lifted the uh, uh, special uh, uh, cabin where uh, Aisha radiallahu anha uh, used to sit on the camel, it was, uh, they did not notice that she was not there. She was very light, so they left the Hawdush and they went and they did not notice that she was not there. So when she came back, she realized that they left, they already left. Uh, before, before, just uh, uh, before leaving, so when she relieved herself and came back, uh, she noticed that she lost her necklace. So she went back and searched for the necklace. During this time, the army left. So when she came back, she did not find the, the army. And uh, she stayed in a place where uh, she would know for sure that as soon as they realized that she was not there with them, they will go back. 
So when, uh, so she stayed in the same place that they they left. Uh, Safwan was the uh, one person, the one companion who used to uh, stay behind the uh, uh, the army just to search the place before he goes on, before he leaves, so that if there is anything they forgot, so he would take it and uh, he, he will uh, bring it to the to the army. So. He was searching and he saw Aisha radiallahu anha. Without talking to her, he got the camel, he made the camel kneel, she went over the camel and he led the camel and it was not a, a far distance when they arrived. So uh, now, who noticed that? The head of the hypocrites, Ibn Abi Salul, Abdullah Ibn Abi Salul. So he accused Aisha radiallahu anha that she had an affair with that, that person. The news reached Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it reached her parents. She was sick at that time. And she asked the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to go to her parents to be nursed over there. And he, he accepted. He was not talking to her. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, stopped talking to Aisha. Anha. She didn't know what was going on. She felt there is something strange, but she was sick, so she couldn't understand it. When uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to come over just to check on her, he used not to talk to her. And after uh, days of that passed, she heard of what everyone knows because the news spread. And she started crying and crying and crying. Her mom was so sad to see her daughter crying so much. So finally, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came one day and he, he couldn't take it anymore. So he said to her, if you did something bad, just repent. Allah will forgive you. And she looked at him and, and, and cried more. And she said, I am not going to repent to a sin that I never did. And if I, if I say, yes, I did, then you will believe me. If I say, no, I did not, you will not believe me. So I will do as what Ya'qub, السلام, the father of Sayyidina Yusuf, السلام, as, as, what he said, as what he did when he lost his, when, uh, uh, he lost his, two, his two sons. He said, uh, um, uh, wa ni'm al I depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only on Allah, so that he will, uh, he will, uh, answer and he will uh, prove my innocence so she said as sayyidna yaqub said fasabrun jameelun wallahu almusta'an ala ma tasifun i'm going to be patient and i am seeking the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clarify the, the matter and she she was crying and crying but she was praying and she was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to, to show that she was innocent. And suddenly the uh, 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 Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam uh, came down to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, uh, it was just a few minutes that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the glad tidings through Jibreel alayhi salam that his wife was innocent. 
and immediately Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after resting, uh, it, it was immediately he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, Abshiri ya Aisha, faqad anzal Allahu baraataki. Ya Aisha, you have the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, revealed the, the ayahs that would uh, uh, indicate that you are innocent. And uh, the, um, uh, the ayahs uh, uh, are um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, uh, that uh, he revealed. They were in Surah An-Nur when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين جاءوا بالإفك عصبة منكم لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الإثم والذي تولى كبره منهم له عذاب عظيم so Allah Allah سبحانه وتعالى said indeed indeed those uh, who came with falsehood are a group among you. Do not think it, uh, it, it's bad for you. Rather, it's good for you. For every person amongst them is what he has earned from the sin. And he who took up on himself the greater portion thereof, for him is a great punishment. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said there should be four witnesses to such accusement. And when they could not, when they do not produce the witnesses, the four witnesses, then it is they in the sight of Allah are the liars. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the uh, uh, gave the glad tidings, gave the bushra to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha and to her parents and to those who love them that she is innocent. So Aisha radiallahu anha uh, was a very special woman. And as I mentioned, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to love her a lot. Once Sayyidina Amr ibn al As, um, he used to think that Sayyidina Muhammad loves him the most. So he, he went to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and, he, uh, and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, man ahabu nasi ilayk? O oh, Prophet of Allah, who is the most beloved to you? And he immediately said, Aisha. So she was the most loved by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst the people who were alive. So he said, what about from the men? He was hoping that he would say his name. So he said, Abuha, her father. He said, who else? He said, Umar. And then who else? And he did not hear his name, and so he, he decided to stop. But everyone with who knows Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to think that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to love him the most. And that was of the, of the good character of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Aisha radiallahu anha was a special woman. And she excelled in so many ways. So the first thing is uh, we saw how Sayyidina Jibreel, radiallahu anhu, he told Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to marry Aisha, radiallahu anha. And later on, she was given the title, As-Siddiqatu Bintu Siddiq, the truthful one the daughter of the truthful one. And she was a very assertive woman, very intelligent. She was a scholar in different fields. And uh, uh, 
there is there is one incident that we need to talk about, and that was the uh, the war that happened between after um, the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of course, uh, between Talha with Zubair and Aisha radiallahu anha on one hand. And on the other hand, and of course their army, and on the other hand, uh, Sayyidina Ali wal Miqdad wal Qaqa and their army on the second hand, on the other hand. So what happened? What is Mawqi'atul Jamal? What happened during that, that battle? Uh, we know that uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an uh, became the caliphate after, uh, in in the Hijjah in the year 35 Hijri. Man radiallahu an. So uh, it was not 100% clear for Sayyidina Ali who killed uh, Sayyidina Uthman. So he postponed uh the the matter of getting revenge for Sayyidina Uthman. Talha was Zubair wa Aisha. They met in Mecca and they talked about this issue. About the the the, the uh, murder of Sayyidina Uthman and what happened, and they uh, mentioned that Ali radiallahu an did not do anything yet for that. So they decided to take um, uh, an army and to go from Mecca to Iraq, so that they would ask for the killers of Uthman radiallahu an. So they came to, they arrived in Al-Basra. And Uthman bin Hanif was the governor over Basra. Some people say that, see the Aisha, Talha, was Zubair and the army, they went against Ali radiallahu an, and they, they fought Sayyidina Ali. And that was completely wrong. Because when... If they wanted to go against Ali radiallahu anh, they would go to Medina where Sayyidina Ali was. But they went from Mecca, they went to Iraq, to Basra. And they did not think that Ali radiallahu anh would oppose, would oppose that or would prevent them from doing that. So when those people who killed Uthman and knew about them, they collected the army and they, uh, uh, they fought them. And it was, the name of that battle was Mawqi'atul Jamal al-Sughra, the battle of the camel, the small battle of the camel. Talha, Zubair, wa Aisha radiallahu anhum and the army uh, got victory over them, and the uh, the uh, governor immediately sent someone to Sayyidina Ali to tell him of the issue of what's going on. So Ali radiallahu an went from Medina with an army. He went to Kufa and. Listen to this. He went to Kufa. He did not go to Basra. He did not go to, the, to Basra, where Sayyidah Aisha and the army is. So when they got there, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, he sent Al-Miqdad wal Qaqa radiallahu anhum. He sent them to Talha and Zubair, and he asked them what they want. So why are they with an army over there? So they said, we want the people who we want to get revenge for Uthman radiallahu anhu who passed away. So they said, they said to them, leave this matter, Ali 
is going to take care of that. The caliphate is going to take care of that. So they both agreed, The both parties agreed to go back and to leave the issue to Sayyidina Ali to take care of it. The Sabaeyin, who were under the leadership of Abdullah ibn Saba, and those are the people who killed Uthman radiallahu anhu. So they knew that when Talha, Zubair, and Aisha, as the first group, would uh, would uh, agree with Al Miqdad, Wal Qaqa, and Sayyidina Ali on the second group, then that will be something bad against them. They will be known for sure, and they will be punished later on. So what they did, they decided to make, to have a fitna. And a group of them went out at night, and they killed some people of the army of Aisha radiallahu anha. So the army of Aisha radiallahu anha, Sayyidina Talha, Sayyidina Zubair, and the army, they said, this is treason. We just had an, uh, an agreement. What happened? Why would, would they kill us at night? So there was a fight. They attacked. And Mawqa'atul Jamal al-Kubra took place. The big camel battle took place took place between Ali radiallahu an and his army and Aisha radiallahu anha and her army. As Zubair radiallahu an and Talha radiallahu an, they did not want the fight. So they asked the people, stop, don't, don't fight. And they both retreated. They did not fight. The the uh, uh, Zubair was hit with an arrow and he died. Talha was hit with an arrow and he died. And uh, uh, at that time, of course, they were shouting at people, go back, we are not here to fight Ali, we are not here to fight Ali, go back. So they, they got killed while they were urging people to go there to go back. Then the camel of Aisha radiallahu anha was hit with an arrow and the camel kneeled down. At this moment, the brother of Aisha radiallahu anha was with the army of Ali radiallahu anha and he went, he raised to, uh, to, the, to the camel of Aisha radiallahu anha. He wanted to make sure that his sister is safe. So he, he, uh, he just looked at her and he was happy that she was safe. At that moment, when the camel kneeled down of Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, immediately the battle stopped. Ali radiallahu anhu was so sad for what happened. Especially when he heard Talha was Zubair and a lot of companions were killed. So the one who killed Sayyidina Ali, uh, Sayyidina uh, uh, Zubair, he came to, to Sayyidina Ali and he said to him, I killed a Zubair and this is his, his uh, sword. So he looked at him, Sayyidina Ali, and he said, don't, don't be so happy. I heard Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Bashir qatil ibn Safiya bin nar, give glad tidings for that who kills Ibn Safiya, the, the, the son of Safiya, that he will be in hellfire. And of course, it was a battle out of control. Sayyidina Ali did not want the battle to happen. Talha was Zubair uh, did, not, uh, when, uh, did not want that battle to happen. And as a result, Sayyidina Ali 
prevented that there should there, there are any captives same as in any battle or any booties uh, in that battle because it was a battle between two groups of Muslims. Sayyidina Ali, making sure that Aisha radiallahu anha was uh, safe, he sent her back to Medina, to her home with uh, a group of uh, um a group of companions taking care of her and until she wa- she got into her home. And then Aisha radiallahu anha said, whenever I remember that day, I would weep, I would cry. None of the two parties wanted to fight each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how truthful both parties are. But those who were against the Muslims, those who were against the unities of the Muslim, they knew that this should happen so there will be uh, a big problem between the uh, people and the, the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So... These are some points about uh, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha. And uh, subhanAllah, if we are to say everything about Sayyida Aisha, days and weeks, and we will not be finished. But in these classes it's about 45 minutes class so we will we will, we we are just choosing the main points and we are just talking about them and there was a question uh, or a request from one of the sisters uh, online that we wish that to hear more stories about uh, Sauda radiallahu anha, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in last class. And uh, as I me- just mentioned, we are just saying very, very, very little about the the, uh, the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, just giving the main points about them. So uh, Aisha radiallahu anha was ummah by herself. She was a society by herself. She was a great person to learn from by herself. And learning about her radiallahu anha, about uh, Aisha radiallahu anha uh, uh, indicates and tells us that a woman can have a big role in society. She can be a scholar, she can be a speaker, she can be a doctor, she can be a teacher. And those were the, the characteristics of Aisha radiallahu anha. She was the most knowledgeable person at her time. Men used to come to her to ask her the most difficult questions. And she would give them the answer. And she would explain everything for them. So this is uh, what uh, we're going to cover about Aisha radiallahu anha. And uh, inshallah, we will be meeting next week with another wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, learning about her, learning about uh, her connection and uh, uh, to her connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until then, until that time, I leave you now with a special greeting and special salam to, and we all send this salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.